Morning, dear ones. Laura here. Welcome to day three of our study of 1 Samuel chapter 17. We're looking at six lessons we can learn from David in his battle against great odds with the giant, Goliath. We have learned, number one, to focus on God and not on our adversary or obstacle. Number two, to resist the temptation to come up with our own solution to our problem or in the hopes of shortening our Valley of Elah. We've come to the point in the story where David and Goliath are going to officially meet. Goliath's initial words come as a shock to no one. What am I, a dog that a boy comes out against me? Go back or I will feed your body to the birds. I must pause to relate a sweet story. Okay, sweet to me because I'm their mom. Years ago, we had an audio recording in the King James Version of this dialogue between David and Goliath, and our two oldest children loved listening to it and asked us to play it over and over again. Eventually, they had it completely memorized. Christopher, aka Pastor Christopher, age five, playing the part of David, and Jonathan, past, aka Pastor Jonathan, age three, playing the part of Goliath. We had the boys perform this for family, much to the delight of everyone. My brother-in-law actually has a VHS recording of this somewhere. I even asked the boys, Christopher and Jonathan, if they would reprise their roles for this series. But alas, they have refused. Hey, if I give you my brother-in-law's email address, would you pester him to find that long lost recording? Just kidding. Okay, sorry, back to the point. Goliath is cursing David by his gods and guaranteeing David's eventual destruction at his hand. David's response is our lesson for today. Number three, speak the truth of God's word. No matter how you feel, speak the word. I feel alone. The word says, I will never leave you or forsake you. I am forever disqualified. The word says, though the righteous man that is, those who have trusted Jesus to be their savior, falls seven times, he still gets up. I can't do this. The word says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. No matter how it looks, speak the word. I'm gonna be destroyed by my adversary. The word says, I will not be afraid though 10,000s assail me on every side. I'm gonna be humiliated by this situation. The word says, no one who hopes in you will ever be put to shame. Listen to David's response. You come against me with a sword and a spear, but I come against you in the name of the Lord of hosts, and he will deliver you into my hand. All those gathered here will know that it is not by sword or spear that the Lord saves, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give it into our hands. David knew the truth. When you read through the Psalms, you come face to face with the reality of David's struggles and hardships, his unjust persecutions, his own personal failures. He lays them out for us all to read. And in the midst of each Psalm, he reminds himself of the truth of God's word. He's whining and complaining away. And then suddenly he says, but you, O oh God, have been faithful. Psalm five, listen to my words, Lord, consider my lament. He goes on to remind the Lord of how awful the wicked are, how much the arrogant deserve judgment. And then he finishes with this thought. Surely, Lord, you bless the righteous. You surround them with your favor as with a shield. Psalm 6, I am worn out from my groaning. I drench my couch with my tears. My soul is in deep anguish. David is expressing a place we have all been. Maybe we are there because of our own foolishness. Maybe because of something completely beyond our control. But whatever the case, listen to the end of the psalm. The Lord has heard my cry for mercy. The Lord accepts my prayer. All my enemies will be overwhelmed with shame and anguish. If there is any lesson to learn from this passage, this may be the most important. Speak the truth of God's word. Align our thoughts with God's thoughts. Adjust our perspective to God's perspective. Isaiah 55, 9 says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. Lord, align our thoughts today with the truth of your thoughts found in your word. Romans 12, 2 says, And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Lord, transform our minds by your grace and power. We love you, Jesus. Amen. I see you tomorrow. I love you bunches.